you trust Virenkin and me, who say uh, tunneling wave functions. Both of these wave functions create a universe with phi dot equal to zero in the beginning. Because, because, equal to zero, okay? Because this is a moment when you make a transition from Euclidean formalism to Minkowski formalism. When it is equal to zero, you stop arguing what is probable, what is not. So I see that Gibbons in both places in Euclidean formalism, which tells you that phi dot equal to zero, and in his Gibbons and Turok formalism, which says that we must start with ultimately large value of the, uh, phi dot, which just does not meet ends with this part. And that's because they started their evolution, Gibbons and Hawking, not from the beginning, but from the end. That, that, that makes, makes a lot of sense. I, I guess to clarify the core of my confusion even more, I, I would love to hear just how you think about the whole concept of what it means for something to be fine-tuned when there's, if there's ultimately no, no time. So if you have this... I mean, I, I hear you saying here that in practice we can look at what things were when we came out of the quantum, fu quantum fuzz and they actually exceeded one and asked, was it fine-tuned yes. then or not? But, yeah. but at the more fundamental level, if you just look at this wave function, just, that's the solution to the Wheeler David equation. So what would it mean to complain about fine tuning? I, I, have, I have two answers uh, to this question. First is the long answer. I can tell you uh, what I consider natural from this point of view, from that point of view, from one, from uh, different approaches to quantum, uh, uh, well, uh, wave function of the universe, and all of these point to some direction. And then there is another thing, you start string theory, you get something, then you fall down to one vacuum and uh, start jumping to another, then it will be a different answer to the same question. Everything fall, uh, points, in my opinion, to the direction that inflation is inevitable. But if I have no real time to talk about it, I have an easier solution. I will say that here is what Rafa Busse is you for. <laughs> okay, because it's, multiverse uh, answer to this. You see, what I was doing, I was doing old-fashioned part of the story, okay? Because some recent questions, for whatever reason, were formulated ignoring multiverse. Okay? Once you have multiverse, then many, many uh, ways of asking this question should be reconsidered, uh, and I sh I'm sure that Raphael will tell you about it. So instead of asking questions about the initial condition, I look questions about measure, but I was just wanted to cover okay. this part of the story. So, so here's what I make up in my mind. <laughs> Is that this whole notion of time has, makes no sense yes. until you have a bunch of structure. Uh, enough structure. What, what's the game? The notion of time makes no sense until you have a, a, a lot of structure. Yes. And also... There right, and then there's no clean point where you say time makes okay. sense or not, it just makes more and more in, sense in, as you in, go along. Yeah, but, 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 in, but in, there, there is something else here <coughs> when uh, some other people okay, are talking about these things. Okay, they are using the terms, and in particular Carl, they are using the terms unitary evolution. Okay? Uh -huh. So they ask, here is a wave function of universe, and there is a unitary evolution of this wave function of the universe to this state which preserve probability. Okay. So let us assume that there is a unitary evolution and then, but there is no evolution for the wave function of the universe because Hamiltonian is equal to zero. So then you cut it into pieces and then you have inflation and in the early universe in inflation there was no single galaxy. Okay? Unitary evolution means you have probability conserved and you have number of objects conserved. Okay? So it's just like you, you have gas and it expands, but all molecules are already there to start for your expansion loops. So you already have all details. But in inflation, you start with zero anything. You may literally have your universe appearing from nowhere or from something very, very simple with no particles there. And then suddenly you have your observers there and galaxies. And this is not a unitary evolution in this sense. And if you try to return, reverse it back, it will never return to the original point unless you just film it and play film back. But in reality, once you created something and then you decide to uh, run this movie back, then your movie will produce even more galaxies instead of putting you to the initial state without any particles.
Okay. <laughs> I wanted to confuse everybody. Yes, I <laughs> well We're going to play Andre's talk backwards later. <laughs> on the camera. Since Nielsen's. In a closed universe. <laughs>